I'm Jazz, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you see this braid and bandana combo, it can only mean that I have tea to spill. So I'm just gonna get right into it. There's quite a bit that I wanna get off my chest. So that's what we're gonna do today. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. We are running back up to a lot of you coming back but not being subscribed. That's suspicious. That's weird. So please, if you find yourself returning to my channel quite often, don't forget to subscribe. It does mean the absolute world to me. Let's just get into the video. So I kind of want to try to speed run this. There's quite a bit of things that are on my mind lately. I guess for starters, I'll say that I am moving. I am no longer going to be in this bedroom. I'm moving back with my grandma for a couple of reasons. There's a lot of new things starting in my life, which will require me to spend less time with her. So it just makes more sense for me to go move back in with her but I currently live with two roommates I've been here for a year and honestly I am kind of relieved to move back when I decided that I wanted to move out I really was set on living alone now as the year has passed the housing market has just got so much worse like if it was difficult to rent a year ago it's even more difficult than it was a year ago if that makes any sense. So unless I make a whole bunch of money on the regular, then there's no way that I could afford a place on my own. And like I said, I was set on living alone when I decided to move out, but the opportunity to move in with a couple of my friends came up and then I have a really big issue with saying no. It's not that I have anything against my roommates at all. It's just like, I have been alone for so long. I'm so used to it that I just knew it would be difficult for me to move in with people, which has evidently just translated into the, like, the whole living dynamic because I find myself always in my room. Like I am genuinely always to myself because I prefer it that way. But another thing that really changes this whole living with roommates experience is the fact that I live with a couple. So my friends are together. And I remember the first day that I moved in, I was instantly like, this doesn't feel like home. Because when you move in with a couple, or at least this is how I felt moving in with a couple, it just feels like you are living in their space because they share everything. You almost feel like a burden. And I know that's never their intention or it was never their intention, I should say. But it's just a feeling that I can't help but feel. And you just kind of constantly feel like a third wheel. And I already experienced that outside of my home life. Like all of my friends are in relationships. So it is genuinely just me, myself and I. And when you're put in a situation where you're constantly exposed to a couple, you can't help but feel like you're in the way, if that makes sense. I'm also just really excited to move because I don't want to feel like I am in the way, even though they've never said that I am. It's again, literally just a personal thing, but it is, it's quite hard living with what feels like a constant reminder that you are, like you have nobody. And I just feel like they need their own space. Like you are a couple, you have been together for quite some time. And as much as you invited me and wanted wanted a third person living with you, I feel like at some point you need your own space and you need to be able to grow with each other as a couple. So that's one thing. Second thing that has also prompted this move is the fact that I'm going back to school. I graduated in November of 2023 with a Bachelor of Psychology and I very quickly <laughs> realized that without anything else, I am kind of screwed. Like I need my master's or a PhD and as much as I loved psychology in the beginning, I quickly fell out of love with it. Now, that could be because of the teachers that I had or professors, I should say. That could be because my entire university experience was one, not even at my own university. Though I spent most of my time, you know, in classes at my university, any sort of university life I had was at our competitor school because I made friends there somehow. But also I was unfortunate enough to experience university during COVID. So I only had seven months actually going to university. And then by the time it was time to graduate, I only had two or three months. So university in general was just not a good experience for me. It was, I felt like I was lacking so much, so much experience, so much interest in my program. It just like very quickly fell apart. And now that I sort of got back into like content creation, like I started YouTube when I was 12 years old. And then I very quickly stopped 
because I thought that people I went to school with would find my page and make fun of me for it. And I was very easily embarrassed and I became just extremely socially anxious to be around anyone or to put myself out there without doing it with somebody else, if that makes sense. But as I said before, this makes me happy and that's really all that matters. So I decided to go to school once again for a completely different program to what I originally studied and what I had essentially prepared my future for. And now I am going into design. The only issue is that I'm going back to school in person. And as I said, I spent the majority of my university years doing school over the computer. And it is so much harder to make friends when you are this age. Then add on top somebody who's just socially awkward. It's not looking good, bruv. It's not looking good, bruv. It's not looking good. So that's something I'm actually really nervous about. I have orientation on Tuesday by the time you're watching this, this Tuesday coming up, and I'm nervous because I have a feeling I am just not gonna be able to talk to anybody and I'm, I know for a fact that no matter how much pep talk I give myself, I'm going to seclude myself and isolate myself and just be on my own. Moving on, I have also decided to do the 75 soft challenge. One of my good friends who I've made the cookies for, um, we went to the Jonas Brothers concert together, like she's my girl, except <laughs> in this instance. On Snapchat, she had started the 75 hard challenge, but had admitted, I think a week later that like, it was not it for her, but like she needs, she wants, like she still wants to pursue it and she wants to reach the goal. But in that same video, she mentioned something of like, she was joking, but I didn't know that she was joking about being like an influencer because she was gonna document her entire like progress. And I was like, oh my God, like we should totally do it together. And she thought that I meant the 75 heart challenge while I thought she meant doing content creation. And long story short, I am now doing the 75 soft challenge. <laughs> and she has also decided to go 75 soft because I think, you know, she has two jobs. I think the 75 hard is just a little bit too extreme. And then at the same time, like I have two jobs and I'm going to school. Like it's, it's the same, it's the same thing. We just won't have enough time. I started the 75 soft challenge on August 19th and I'm filming this on August 18th. So <laughs> to my future self, God, speed. Now this is where the tea really is because there have been quite a series of events leading up to how much tea I have on this. Now I am not going to say the name at all for legal reasons, but as I said, I have two jobs. Recently, I have two jobs. I want to start off by saying the job market is actually disgraceful. I digress. So when I got this job, I was over the moon because I'm not even... I cannot lie. Since January, I have been trying to look for another job and I'll get interviews and stuff like that, but just always get rejected. So when I finally got this job, I was over the moon. Now saying that, I gotta be honest with y'all, I'm a little conflicted. I have some concerns about my new job. You know when you just have a gut feeling that something weird is going on? That's how I feel about this job. I technically started two weeks ago. I still have yet to get contract. I don't know if I should really be saying this if I'm being completely honest, but I, I'm on the schedule and we have been going through training and it's just, it's just, it's just a little bit off. Like when I first got there, I thought to myself, like genuinely, I thought to myself, this sort of feels like a cult. And I made friend through training, unless she watches this and she thinks we're not friends and tee hee haha, just kidding. But we essentially take the same way home together. So we've gotten really comfortable with each other and like debriefing about our training and like going over things that we're gonna have to know in order to like successfully do the job. And it was so reassuring to see that she had also this really weird feeling about this job. Like I said, we didn't get a contract yet. I don't know how long our probation period is. And a lot of the things that they want us to do in terms of like customer service is is it's kind of pushing it a little bit you know what i mean and like some of the stories that our manager will tell us is like it seems really bullshitty like do not get me wrong i don't think you're lying when you tell me that good customer service leaves people feeling happy at the end of their experience however one of the things that like we were told was that hi guys i am literally editing the video as we speak and i just remembered 
I cannot say what I was about to say in this video because one of the first things that we were told was to not share anything that was in our manual and these rules that we were given are in our manual and it's copyright and I can essentially get in a lot of trouble for it. So unfortunately, I'm so sorry. I cannot tell you the rules that were enforced on us. This is so bait, I'm so sorry. It just feels very weird. And the amount of things that we are being trained on with limited time, it seems extremely unfair. The store is broken up into three sections. I've trained for six days. And in those six days, we had only trained on one section of the store. We haven't trained on the other two yet. And, and our manager believes that everybody should know everything. Like we don't have a specific person who's an exper expert on this section of the store or a specific person expert on that section. Like everybody is meant to know everything about the entire store. And this week is my first like full week on the floor. And I barely know the first section that we've been trained on because there is an overwhelmingly amount of information to know about that section of the store. And if somebody comes up to me asking for either sections two or three, I don't know shit because it's not like we haven't even discussed it. It has strictly been just this one section. And to go off from that, our manager doesn't want anybody to be told what to do. Even though I am only experienced in one out of three sections of the store, they don't want us to be kept there because again, we should know everything from the store. But then when we, when we were told how our first week is gonna look like, they said that we were gonna be strictly kept to handle this one section of the store. Do you see how confusing this entire thing is? Everything that I am telling you is what I've been told and it's how I am understanding because it is how it's being explained. So like, if you are having a hard time understanding what I'm saying, imagine how I feel having to actually do the thing. So now going back to the friend that I made during training, as I said we talk about everything that's going on and we kind of like debrief our entire experience so my friend is the most experienced person in my training group she knows her shit when we first met we got to tell each other about ourselves and like i found it funny because my manager was like we're gonna go around telling each other a little bit about ourselves and like you know people are always going back to like interview mode and going, oh, well, I'm this old and I go to this school. And he said he wants us to defer from that and actually tell us something about ourselves, like who we are. So naturally we all listened and we just went around and my friend, she had explained that like, like she had gone through all of her experience and like, she's clearly the most qualified person there. And it was funny, like after we all had finished talking about ourselves, at the end of our training that day, my manager just went, well, we don't have enough time to cover this because you guys took so long talking about yourselves. So I guess we're gonna have to cover it the next day. Sorry, this is, hello? Did you not just ask us to do that? And I'm pretty sure like everybody spent 30 to 40 seconds speaking about themselves. And my manager just tells constant unnecessary stories that like derail us from what we're actually supposed to be learning about and it's just like it's very hypocritical so when my friend told us about all of her experience ever since that day my manager will start to ask her questions specifically on whatever it is that we're selling again i don't want to give anything away because i don't want anybody to know what company I'm talking about, they're always ready to shut her down and just be like, that's wrong. And you can tell that they are specifically picking on her because she has the most experience, but she doesn't flaunt it. Like she doesn't think she's better than everybody. She's just, she is so down to earth. She's so sweet. And yet my manager just likes to like belittle her knowledge in front of the rest of us. So my friend and I, we get to talking. And like I said, we debrief after every training day and we just kind of point out the really odd things that my manager will do and like it just doesn't sit well with us like there have been a couple of times now in training where I've done something completely right and my manager won't think I did it right and will deliberately move me out the way so that they can check like it's happened on two occasions now where I've done something I said it's right and they're like mm, that doesn't look right let me do it let me check and they check and they go oh I guess you are right. What do I gain from lying to you? Like, it's almost as if you are genuinely upset that the rest of us are actually getting the job done and getting shit right. Like you don't like it for some reason. But anyway, one day we were coming back from training and training, this is, 
Honestly, everything happens for a reason because after training, we ended later than we normally do. So we ended up taking the bus and the train back home later than we usually do. While we were at the train station, I couldn't help but notice these two girls and one of them just kept looking at us. I'm obviously not gonna confront because I'm just a pussy. <laughs> we ended up sitting on the train and they end up sitting right in front of us. And this girl, she kept looking at us. And it got to a point where like, I just kept looking back at her like, you're her, I'm talking to my friend. And I just kept like looking back at her more frequently because like, girl, you have not broken eye contact since we walked into that train station. What is going on? And it got to a point where she was just like, I'm so sorry, I do not mean to be rude, but do you work at this company? And we were like, yes, we do. And she was like, are you in training? And we were both like, yeah, we just finished our training today and we're supposed to start next week. And she was like, oh, cause I'm an ex employee from there. And we were just like, interesting, do tell. So we started asking her about her experience and like essentially wanting to know if our suspicions were correct. And then she started to explain to us, she worked there and she didn't work there for that long. And she was like this young black girl and one of the first things that she said was that it felt very exclusive like when she met the rest of the team like i clearly stand out and it was interesting to me because i am half black and half latina so i was like do tell me more and she was like yeah it just felt like I felt uncomfortable. I felt like I didn't belong there. I cannot make this up. It is one of the things that you experience in life that you have to be there in order to like believe that it's real. She asked, she said, does this person still do the training? And we said, yes, yes they do. And she, you know when like somebody's getting ready to tell you some tea so they like adjust themselves and whatnot. So she adjusted herself and we were like, oh shit, like we are about to get some tea spilled. And I kid you not, her phone was nowhere to be seen. Like, at least I don't remember it being so close to the edge of her lap, but like out of nowhere, her phone went from her lap flying. Like it was the most aggressive throw that nobody did manually. Like her phone just flew and fell into a little crack between the train platform and the doors of the train. Literally only has space to fit a phone. Her phone just flew out of her lap into this crevice and she had no choice but to get off the train with her friend. I never got her name. We don't know her Instagram. We don't know how to get in contact with her. Basically what it felt like was we were being watched because the minute she was about to say something about our manager, that happened and we probably will never see her again that's where the story ends actually plot twist i quit my job it's august 23rd didn't last a week i am still thinking about it all that to say there's a lot going on there's a lot of new going on there's a lot of change there's a lot of tea there's a lot of drama i don't know that is it for this week's video i really hope you guys enjoyed if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget if you find yourself coming back to my channel and you like my content and you enjoy me as a person, please don't forget to subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. I want us to grow a little friend group over here on this channel. Also, I think I should just like throw it out there because it ends September 4th. Again, if you like me and my content, I will put a link in the description. I signed up to be on the Sephora squad. If you want to leave me a testimonial and just like tell Sephora that you like me and my content and why you like me and my content, that would also be really greatly appreciated. I would honestly, I don't even know the words to explain how grateful I'd be if you did that. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye!